stress less and have more fun. Experts say yes, and more and more people are actually choosing not to drink. Nicole Rosh is joining us, a young adult peer recovery support specialist at Ashley Addiction Treatment Center. So I've seen that term online, sober curious. Explain what does that mean? Well, the sober curious movement just keeps people mindful about their relationship to alcohol, how much they're consuming, when, what times. And, you know, for some people, when they are evaluating that, it causes them to ditch booze altogether mm. because they realize they feel so much better sober. For others, they're just more mindful about their drinking and how they feel afterwards. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about some of the benefits there. What are really the benefits of, of being sober and choosing that lifestyle? Well, for me as a sober person in recovery, you know, just being in tune with my whole body, uh, you know, mind, body, and soul, mm. uh, enjoying the benefits of waking up early, going outside and enjoying the fresh air, mm -hmm. the nature in the neighborhood. These are things that I wouldn't normally do had I had a night out on the town. <laughs> Uh, Real talk. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And those are really some true benefits. What are some of the challenges? What gets in this people's way of getting sober and staying sober? Well, holidays can be very, very challenging times. Yeah. Holidays often evoke very strong emotions. And it's important to acknowledge that, recognize that, and come up with a plan to set yourself up for success. Mm -hmm. And for first timers or those in recovery, it can feel especially strange and awkward as you're first trying to navigate these new social situations without a drink. And speaking of holidays, Valentine's yes. Day, it's right around the corner. So what advice do you have uh, for people who are choosing to go sober for Valentine's Day? Well, I have some tips. Okay. Uh, first, talk ahead of time. Whether you're planning a date or going out with friends, have a conversation. Let those people know that you're not going to drink. What you decide to share about why you're sober is totally up to you, mm -hmm. but having those conversations ahead of time just helps to alleviate the awkwardness. Second, plan ahead. Be aware of what your triggers are. What do you do if you are craving a drink? Come up with some good, healthy coping mechanisms to help get you back to a better headspace. Third, don't sacrifice the things that you love. Mm -hmm. That is one of the biggest misnomers about sobriety. You do not have to give up what you love when you're sober. Mm -hmm. and by all means, if you love going out to a fancy dinner, <laughs> Do that. Right. A lot of restaurants have mocktails on the menu. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, go to a theater. Go ice skating. There are so many options. It's just, it's endless. Okay. Um, lastly, remove yourself from stress. If you find yourself in a stressful situation, know that it's okay. Don't feel guilty about removing yourself from that situation. If you need to go outside, take a walk around the block, call <laughs> a friend, do that. Just know that you're not alone. We know that connection is the key to recovery. So use your tools. Okay. What great advice. We are enlightened. Yes. yes. Thank you so much, Nicole. You're so and welcome. And reminding us that it can be so fun to be yes. sober. So absolutely.